Hey guys, so I decided to do a mock draft for tonight's um, 2017 NFL draft, and so let's get started. So for the Browns, I had them picking Miles Garrett. Now, some people are thinking that the Browns will take or should take Mitch Trubisky. Now, Mitch Trubisky isn't a bad pick, but I just feel Miles Garrett is the superior, the smarter decision to go with. He's just a very good pass rusher, and I definitely think he's the best player in this draft. And I do think he has a bright future. It's not far-fetched to draft the pass rushers first overall and all of that. And ideally, this isn't a quarterback draft class where you can just draft the quarterback first overall, and he's going to become like this instant success or whatnot. So for the 49ers, I had them drafting the Sean Watson. Now, in the West Coast system, you have to have a quarterback with with some legs to him. I think Deshaun Watson obviously has some legs. He has some mobility there. Now, some people would say that Kyle Shanahan doesn't like mobile quarterbacks, but the fact that he's in San Francisco, you kind of have to follow through the West Coast system, and I think they're going to do that with uh, Deshaun Watson as their pick. And even though Deshaun Watson isn't exactly like um, fit to play a pro-style offense yet, they have Brian Hoyer to be there, like as a mentor, or something to follow. So if he's on like a bench for like a season or half a season, I think that could definitely be a very good pickup for him. I definitely believe he is my favorite quarterback prospect in in this um, year's draft. For the third pick, I had the Bears, but I projected a trade for the Bills to trade up for Marshawn Latterbor, cornerback from Ohio State. Now the reason why. I think the Bills will trade up to the spot is because whenever New England has a devastating offseason where it just devastates the NFL, the Bills try to even out the playing field. So in 2014, when the New England Patriots signed Darrell Rivas and got Brandon Browner, the Bills traded up to get Sammy Watkins. Now, what happened in the 2017 offseason? Well, the Patriots traded for Brandon Cooks, and so they're going to go with I think the Bills will draft Marshall and Lattimore, so they will kind of even out the playing field, similar to what they try to do in 2014. Now, for the fourth pick, the Jaguars have that. I am projecting a trade for the Bengals to trade up to get a man named, known as uh, Solomon Thomas, who a lot of people like as a, probably one of the better defensive ends in this league, definitely a, probably one of the best run softers in this draft. Then for the Titans, I have them drafting Jamal Adams. Now, obviously, the Titans... For the most part, when it comes to their secondary, probably needs the most improvement. And I can definitely see Jamal Adams as a good fit right there. Now, for the Jets, I have them drafting Derek Barnett. I definitely see them loading up on the D-line. And there are some defensive linemen that could leave in the future for the New York Jets. So I definitely see them going that position. I would not be surprised if the Jets would trade down in the draft so they can maximize more picks. Because, let's be honest, the Jets might be competing to have the worst record for next year's draft. Then for the Chargers, I have Jonathan Allen. He's another defensive lineman right there, and I think that will just help bolster out their defense. I think they they kind of got um, their defense on the right foot this year with um, having Joey Boza out there, and they definitely did a lot better. And I think if they keep on um, maximizing on defense and all that, that, that can really um, that could be a good formula to uh, win with. Now for the Panthers, I have him drafting David Joku. Now, obviously his last name sounds like he's from like Dragon Ball Z or whatnot, but I definitely believe they're going to go with a two tight end set. So it doesn't mean that Greg Olson's out. I think they're just going to do what New England likes to do, like what they did with Gronkowski and Hernandez and Gronkowski with Bennett and now Gronkowski with Allen. And that's something I think they're going to um, believe in because they're wide receivers aren't exactly like the best right there. They have Kelvin Benjamin, but then they have Devin Funchess who really needs to um who hasn't really like like truly developed into like a solid number 2 and they also um lost Ted Ginn to the uh, Saints, I believe. And then for the ninth pick, that's the original pick the Bengals have, but I think the Jaguars will swap picks with them is the Jaguars to draft OJ Howard. Now they just recently traded away Julius Thomas and it's because he just wasn't working out, and I think they want to fill in that tight end gap so they will get an O.J. Howard to help out in that vertical offense that the Jacksonville Jaguars want to run. Now, for the um, for the 10th pick, I had the Bills and the Bears swap, so the Bears would be picking here. I have them picking uh, Tredarius White, a cornerback there. I think the reason why is because, well, he's a little bit lankier, and I think they want to really maximize picks. And I, think, I think the Bills will give him a good deal. 
on on when it comes to the draft pick. So they kind of need a corner though. So I can definitely see them like sticking to the number three pick. But I think what's going to happen is they're going to trade down to try to maximize picks to benefit the future of the team. And then I have the Saints. I have them drafting Malik Hooker because if you remember, uh, Malcolm Jenkins was on the Saints and he was a safety from Ohio State, very similar to Malik Hooker. So I can definitely see the Saints picking um, picking him up and all that. And that year when the Saints actually did pick up a safety from Ohio State, they actually won the Super Bowl, just to put that in perspective. And then the Browns get the draft pick again. I think they're going to draft um, Mitch Trubitsky from this pick. And I think it's just because, well, this guy actually wants to be a Cleveland Browns quarterback. And there's not too many people who actually want to play in Cleveland. So I think Mitch Trubitsky would be an excellent, an excellent um, pick right there. And then for the Cardinals, I have them picking Corey Davis. Now, last year you had the Michael Floyd. He underperformed. And he had his DUI and whatnot, so he got the cut from the team. So, But he overall underachieved. And since they lost that um, receiver, who was in a contract here, they're going to go after, um, I think, Corey Davis right there. He kind of fits that explosive build. He has good size. I think he's roughly around like 6'3". And I think how the Cardinals like it, they like to have two stud wide receivers right there. And I think that's what they're going to do and draft Corey Davis. Now, I have a projected trade by the Titans trading up the swap for the Eagles pick to draft John Ross. Now, the reason why I think they'll draft John Ross is, well, obviously because they don't really have that too many great receivers and all that. And they are a great red zone team, the Titans already. It's just, what about like hitting a home run play when you're not in the red zone or scoring outside of the red zone? Now, they could do it with um, DeMarco Murray. I know Marcus Mariota is fast, but it's really hard to pull off 70-yard TD runs, especially with a quarterback, no matter how fast the quarterback is. I think if you get John Ross there, you have that 4-2 speed that he can be um, a comfortable deep threat. And one thing for sure is they definitely like um, really good 40 times the Titans. They really do. If you Well, they drafted Chris Johnson. He was the original holder for the record of the 40-yard dash. And they also would like a really fast um, wide receivers on the outside. That's just kind of what their style. And I think John Ross would uh, fit the Titans very, very well. Now, for the 15th pick, I have the Colts picking Obi Melifonio. Now, he's the really athletic freak athlete from UConn. And a lot of people are surprised about that and about his overall ability. And I think his combine basically shot up his draft. Now, he's a safety, um, or they're saying that safety or cornerback. And for the Colts, if you remember back in like the 2006 when they had that juggernaut offense, Bob Sanders was a really good safety. And the safeties for the Colts, they're, they're okay. They're okay starters. But I think Obi Melifonio, he's an athletic talent. And I think that could potentially translate to be a great safety and be an athletic beast, kind of like what Bob Sanders was back in the day. Now for the Ravens, I have them drafting Mike Williams simply because they lost Steve Smith and they lost Kamar Aiken. And they definitely need some receiver help there. And I think Mike Wallace, you can't really rely on him as a true number one receiver. And Mike Williams, he has some size. He has some he has some speed. He's a true deep friend. I think he would fit well with Joe Flacco. A nice big target. You can throw him in there all the time. For the Redskins, I have them drafting Hassan Reddick. Now, it's just because on their defense... They don't really have the best linebacker in the world. I think that would definitely help, especially when when you have Ezekiel Elliott um, in their division that they've played them twice in a year. And I think just having that linebacker play would just help them so they're not run over, so they can keep the so teams aren't just milking the clock on them. So since the Titans and the Eagles swap pop, the Eagles would be drafting at the 18th spot. I have them drafting a Dory Jackson. Now a Dory Jackson was a lot of people thinking that the Seahawks would draft them. I think one thing for sure is the Eagles and the Seahawks kind of have the same similar personnel when it comes to the secondary. I think one thing for sure is if you remember Byron Maxwell signed a big deal with the Philadelphia Eagles before he was traded. And I think that he would fit well with on um, Philadelphia and the Philadelphia cornerbacks are pretty bad. And also like some people would say they will need a receiver. I like Alshon Jeffrey. Jordan Matthews drops the ball a little bit too much, but there is something there. Brent Selk ain't bad. Darren Sproul is a nice um, gadget player to really use, and I think that could be really helpful. Now, for the Buccaneers, I have them drafting Dalvin Cook, and a lot of people like Doug Martin as a running back and all that, and a lot of people 
looked at LeGarrette Blount, and they eventually got rid of him. And so I think what they're going to do is they're just going to draft Dalvin Cook really high and just put him there. And he's going to be a nice runner. He's probably the, besides Joe Mixon, he's the best running back draft um, draft pick um, or draft prospect. That's there. For the Broncos, I have them drafting Dick. Cam Robinson. Now, Cam Robinson is that big left tackle out of Alabama, and obviously Alabama tackles. Well, in college, they were all great. But one thing for sure about um, Cam Robinson is he's more of a run blocker, and that's what the Broncos like to do. They like to run the ball a lot. So I definitely think that Cam Robinson would be a good fit for the Broncos, and I think that could make the Broncos a playoff team. Now for the Lions, I have them drafting Christian McCaffrey. Because I look at Christian McCaffrey, he's like a he's a very versatile running back. You have um, one of the one of the um, executive directors there, I think, is Jim Bob Cooter, and he's part of the scouting department, and he used to work for the Patriots, and so he likes a lot of versatility there. And ideally, they're going to need a versatile running back, just how they run that vertical offense. You're going to need a guy that has some power, gets some speed, who can catch the ball and all that. And plus, he's a good return man. And the Lions just lost Andre Roberts. Andre Roberts led the league in uh, uh, return touchdowns when it comes to on special teams. So that is a loss there. So if you put Christian McCaffrey there, you solve the return your returner problem and you solve your running back problem. Now, for the Dolphins, I have them drafting uh, Jared Davis. Now, the Dolphins don't have the best linebackers in the world. They have definitely um, addressed the linebacker position. They did sign Lawrence Timmons to a two-year contract. And one thing for sure about um, Jared Davis is um, he, he's just a typical like inside linebacker and all that. But one thing for sure about the Dolphins is they're going to be facing a lot of good running backs this year. A lot of teams that like to run the ball. And that's one thing for sure because they're playing the NFC South. You have basically re recently acquired Adrian Peterson, Mark Ingram, Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman, Stephen um, Tolbert, and then you have um, maybe Dalvin Cook or hell, even Doug Martin who had some success. And you have some running quarterbacks there with Cam Newton. Not only that, you look at the AFC East, they do have good running backs there. You have LaShawn McCoy, Matt Forte, and the Patriots just recently acquired Mike Gillisley. So... But there's some interesting parts right there where they're gonna have to they're gonna be have to stop the run at some points. Now they could draft the corner there. I think they should draft the corner, but I think linebacker is the way they're gonna go for this ride. Because I think ideally they're gonna stick to their pass rush and they also acquire Will Hayes. So I think they're gonna go from there to try to try to um stop New England through pass rush more than coverage. Now when it comes to the Giants, I have them drafting on Garrett Bowles because Ideally, the run game last year and the passing game didn't go so well. And partially was that was because of the blocking. At least if you put a left tackle there, you get the most important position when it comes to blockers. And that kind of, that will just help, like, that will just, that will minimize um, the problem and make the passing game better and make the run game better overall. And then for the Raiders, I have them drafting as Zach Cunningham. Now, the Raiders definitely don't need too much on their team. It's more about development with them. I could see them draft, um, um, trading down the draft, but I think ideally they're just going to stick with their pick, and they're gonna, just going to take some Zach Cunningham, who's just going to be a depth piece for the most part. Then I have the Texans. I have them drafting uh, Ryan um, Sinzik, or Ram, no, Ryan Ramzik, something like that. But basically, he's a left tackle. He's going to be the future. He's going to basically eventually replace Dwayne Brown, who's getting really getting up there in age. And Dwayne Brown has been a very important piece to the Houston Texans. So I definitely think that they're going to address that move. And Dwayne Brown was very um was very um optimistic with the idea of uh, bringing in a left tackle himself. Now for the Seahawks, I have them drafting um. Malik McDowell. Now they did have some problems with their defensive line in the sense that they had some problems with the health. And also, they definitely lost some um, key defensive um, linemen over the past few years because a lot of people forget. Like a lot of people think of Seattle, they think of their secondary, secondary, secondary. But that D line that they have was pretty damn good during those years, and it's kind of gone down. Like ideally, they'd still have pass rushers, but they don't have depth on the pass rushing unit, which is a concern. Where they kind of rank in the middle when it comes to sacks. And ideally, if you're going to play a zone defense, which what Seattle desires, they're going to have to be. They're going to have to have a good pass rush and not just an average pass rush. 
Then you have the Chiefs picking, and I have them picking Leonard Fournette. Now, I did say Leonard Fournette is not a first-round pick, and ideally, I don't think he should be drafted in the first round. But I think the Chiefs are going to take a shot at him, and I think they're going to view him like a Christian Okoye and a true home run player. Because the issue is they have home run players on offense and all that. The issue is they have, they have to rely on Alex Smith giving them the ball. Alex Smith is not that good of a quarterback. He's mediocre, and he's really a check-down artist. Yes, he doesn't turn over the ball, but he doesn't really make the big plays when you need them. I think you're going to need a running back position there, and truly. And with Jamal Charles um, having two big injuries with him, and they had to release him, I think they definitely have to address the um, the um, the running back position. Then for the Cowboys, after drafting them, um, Marlon Humphrey. I think when it comes to their D line, they're pretty all set for their front seven. I think they're they kind of like it. I think they were ranked number one in rush defense. And their secondary, they lost Barry Church, they cut Morris Claiborne, and they got rid of Brandon Carr. And I think ideally what they're going to try to, I think what they want to do is they're going to move Byron Jones to the number one corner spot, and then they're going to move in, um, draft Marlon Humphrey to play um, either number one corner and Byron Jones play number two corner. They're going to play from right there. Then for the pack, um, then for the Packers, I have them drafting uh, Kevin King. Now, when I look at their um, their defense, I, I really that might be one of the worst defenses in the league. I'm not gonna lie. And one thing for sure is the definitely the weak link was cornerback. If you look at when when they played against Atlanta, they were just torched all over the place. And they're definitely gonna need a cornerback who can press, who is athletic. And I think that's gonna be a guy that's gonna maybe help bolster their second, at least make the problem, at least um, minimize their second, their um their bad play on secondary. Now for the Steelers, I have them drafting um, Garen Connolly because I think they definitely need a cornerback there. And with um, New England, they're the team to be in the AFC. They're going to want as a, they're going to want a guy that's going to be able to cover and maybe possibly play some man. Now I do know they run zone a lot of the time, but at the same time though, they're going to have to play man at some point. I think Garen Connolly can do the best of both parts, and plus he's a good tackler too, is which the Steelers. And the Steelers want good tacklers um, as um, cornerbacks. Now for the Falcons, I have them drafting T.J. Watt because I think they want to have um, basically a duo on pass rush. Him and Vic Beasley, and I can see T.J. Watt on the other side. I truly believe that they had a second stud pass rush on that defensive line unit. The Falcons would have won the Super Bowl. And they still got five sacks in that Super Bowl, of course, but some of it was covered sacks. So if you get T.J. Watt there, it would definitely help the pass rush out, definitely minimize the blitzing, and I definitely think that would definitely, that would of course make the Falcons' defense um legit because you have Vic Beasley, Don Terry Poe, and then you have J.J. Watt's brother on the on one side. I think that's very very impressive. And then for the Saints who traded their um pick, um. Um, traded for that pick from um, for Brandon Cooks. I think they're going to draft from Reuben Foster. Now, some people are saying Reuben Foster is going to be drafted in like like the 11th pick for the Saints. I thought that the 12th the, for the 32nd pick because with all the altercations with him, I think a lot of people, a lot of teams are just scared of him. And one thing for sure about Reuben Foster, the, he's a big hitter. And now the Saints like to play a very, very physical game, especially with that defense. And Ruben Foster, I really like how he can hit as a linebacker. He's probably the best heavy-hitting linebacker in this league overall. And I definitely think that, I definitely do like his style of play, and I definitely think it would be a good pickup for the Saints. And it will turn from the Saints being the worst defense in the league to a below-average defense in this league. All right, well, that's it for my mock draft right here. Um, you can comment down below about what you think about um, who's going to be drafted. You can check the description. I'll put down um, all the people I listen or about all the teams, um, what I think they're going to draft. Like, basically, I'll put my mock draft in the description. And you can comment down below about what your team's going to draft or what your mock draft is if you really want to put that down. All right, thanks, guys. Have a nice day.